You are now watching Diamond Collectors, brought to you by Francis Ford Coppola Winery. Welcome to Diamond Collectors, a series where we will explore the fast-growing subculture of diamond wine bottle collecting. In this episode, we travel to the city of Napa, a Northern California hamlet that attracts tourists the world over with its fine wines and unrivaled scenery. It is here, amongst the grapevines of Napa, where we will make another scheduled stop in our ongoing quest to reveal the fascinating lives of diamond collectors. My name is Amy D. I'm a second grade teacher. I was born and raised here in Napa, California, and I collect diamond label claret bottles. And here she is, my baby. This is uh, my passion project. This is my collection. As you can see, I only collect diamond claret bottles, no other varietals. I have been collecting claret bottles for three years. The way it started was at our wedding. We were, we were planning our wedding and we were tasting all this wine. We don't know anything about wine. This is my husband. We don't know anything about Bobby. wine. So we're, we're planning the wedding and both of us immediately gravitated towards the claret bottle. It just drew us in. It's a special bottle, it's fun. We got it for the wedding. At the end of the wedding, we're just gonna throw away all these beautiful bottles. Recycle. We were gonna recycle, recycle all these beautiful bottles. bottles. Realized, what a waste, these are collectible, which we didn't know at we first, didn't know it was a thing. and then boom, I mean, it just exploded from there, and it became a really important part of our lives. I um, think we should show them the pictures. Do you want to see some wedding pictures? Three years ago already, mm -hmm. which it doesn't seem like it was that long ago, but... Time flies. And there, the you bottle. can see the bottle, how beautiful it is. It's a, that's a big bottle. Yeah, and the net. The gold, it pops. There's Craig, he married us. My good friend Craig. It was pretty special. What a blast. Here's the cake. Okay, let's show the cake video. I don't, I don't think we need we, to, I don't think we, we need to. Can we show the cake video? I don't think we need, need to show the video. Let's this show really... the cake video. Anything to do with the collection, <laughs> but. <Yeah. laughs> it was your idea. So you get the idea. It was, it went viral, and, and, and that was all building up to this. And these are the actual bottles from the wedding. You saw them in the wedding pictures. These are the, the originals. Uh, this was the beginning of the collection. All this top portion of the display, these are from the wedding, and then the rest I added in later. The 2011s were very important to me. They were the beginning, but then I realized, well, we were married in 2013, but the release date is two years after the vintage, which I didn't realize. So then I figured I should collect 2013s, uh, you know, in honor of our wedding and our marriage. Uh, the banner. Uh, the banner. Look, let's show them the banner. Do you know where it is? Yeah, yeah. No, okay, right. get it, get it, get it. Oh, uh, yeah. See, I knew just where it was. Our latest flea market find. And she is a beaut. Nothing to see over here, of course. These are the 2013s. I decided to start collecting specifically this year in honor of our wedding anniversary. And uh, here we have the six liter, the three, the one and a half, and the 750s. All of these have the original cork. Any bottle collector knows very important to have the complete bottle with the original cork. This is a very special etched right onto the bottle. This is not a label. Amy's got her bottle thing, and that's great, and it's pretty public. It's for, you know, guests to see. I, on the other hand, have a more private thing going on. Uh, in addition to being a public school teacher, I teach third grade, I also dabble with professional wrestling. So you can see there's a lot of a lot of holes here still uh, waiting to be filled in. I'm always on the hunt. These are the vintages that 
I have yet to find. I'm searching every day. I'm on eBay, Craigslist, uh, Diamondista user groups online, searching for all of these spots to be filled. Now I've got something I really want to show you guys. Here we go. Peel your eyes. Mm -hmm. Here we go, here we go. As a newcomer, it's my role to, uh, to lose to these other guys and, and uh, gals. Oh, there's my buddy Craig uh, as the ref. You know, it, it takes just as much to lose every match as it does to win every match, or, or even this one. That's what being a babyface is all about. I, I make them look good, and I sell it. And it's all about the fans. Even if my record is 0-52-1, oh, uh, they still love me, and I love them back. Harder. So here's the 1990, and here's the 91. And these are the oldest bottles that I have in my collection, very rare. Here's the 2005, you can see it, you know, the glossy label, no netting, still valuable. But then in 2006, they introduced the matte black label, gold netting. Oh, and there's Amy uh, as my valet, Lady Clarette. Uh, valet just means manager, so she's my manager. If I were to ever win a match, this would be my move, my signature finish. The Grape Crusher. Those are the grapes that Amy uh, throws at me, and then uh, there I am, stomping them. Here it is, here it is. Yeah. So that's, that's, uh, that's me. So this was originally an in-store display. Um, this was one of my 2013s that was taken down by the quake, um, Francis Coppola Claret golf ball. Uh, this is a miniature recreation of a real billboard. There's, this is one of maybe 100. This is mint in the package. Uh, the playing cards. So I have three in the plastic, three out of the plastic, and one that we have actually played with. but. They're all in pretty good shape. I mean, near, near mint, near mint, lightly played. The ace of spades is the claret, of course. Um, what else? Oh, familiar? This is one of my favorites. I don't wear it, but uh, I, I keep it displayed. Here I am. That's a baby Bob the Crusher with his idol, Pete Zaria. Uh, our dog, when I was a child, Roddy, got a hold of it. We thought we were going to have to throw it away because he kind of shredded it to pieces. But my dad, he always said, never give up. He said, let's tape it back together and put it back on the wall. That's where it's been ever since. Never give up. So August 24th, 2014, 3.20 in the morning, a 6.0 earthquake took 11 bottles from my collection. Finally, I, I swept up the shards and I, I was going to just toss them out. And my husband said, no, we're not gonna toss them out. Let's save them. And every last shard of these will be super glued back together before I die. This is my bottle rehabilitation station. Uh, this one I've been working on for about two weeks. Uh, this, this guy has been about two months. So uh, it's, it's a labor of love. It's painstaking. On this rack, I have some of my past characters, past uniforms that I would wear. Jurassic Mark, the first character that I stepped into the ring with. Looks awesome, right? Ah! The thing is that it's impossible to wrestle in. Bob 1.0. I just... So this is the second to the last Bob the Crusher. They were fine with this, but they had a problem with the grapes. I love Bobby. I support him in his wrestling 100%. Even if he is a jobber, and I wish they would let him win once in a while. But I'm not a jobber. 
Right, a baby face. That's more like it, a baby face. Yeah, an experienced mm -hmm. loser. Wrestling for me is about putting on a great show for the audience. It doesn't bother me that it's staged or made up. The feelings and emotions that the audience has for our characters and the fun that they have is real. So for me, it's not really about losing. And it's not about competition for me either. Diamond bottle collecting, it's not about making money for me. I have other diamondistas offering to buy it from me all the time. All the time. But I would never sell it because it's so dear to my heart. It's something that I started doing right after our wedding. And I may not have the biggest diamond bottle collection, but that's okay. It's a lot of fun. It really means a lot to us and it's something we enjoy doing together. Join us on our next episode of Diamond Collectors for a quick layover in Riverton, Wyoming to visit a barn bottle collection where the sky's the limit.